All right, this is the PD for TCA prep to increase ACT reading scores. My name is Houston Cruz. This is my wife, Kim Cruz. I teach at Rue County High School. I teach social studies, world civs for uh, sophomores. Kim teaches at Creekside Elementary and she teaches first grade and she does uh, predominantly special ed. And what we're gonna be talking about today is going over TCA prep to increase ACT reading scores and discussing just a few different strategies and things of sort that we found during this research. First thing we're going to go over again, uh, a teacher at the Rue High School. Um, we performed pretty well in ACT tests. You know, our numbers for the incoming year are looking really, really good. So, you know, some of the strategies and some of the things we've used, you know, have really worked well. Um, Reading's been identified as an area that we really need to help students meet benchmark. Our scores have been pretty good, but overall, it's been a situation where we try to find different ways that we can wind up improving this and trying to bring more kids to benchmark. And even though our scores are a little higher, it's still an area of need that we identified. So to do this, we went out and tried to find some type of software and things that we could use to be able to provide positive interventions to the kids and to the people. And uh, in doing this, you know, we came up with the idea of trying to be able to find one specifically geared towards ACT, and we came up with TCA prep software. And it's an identified item to help increase student readiness for the test. Um, introduction idea was to provide all students with the ability to prepare for the test and trying to find a way to be able to give all these students, you know, the capability to be able to get by with it. Trying to be able to find something that we could include for every single student, not for just some of the students. TCA prep was implemented for preparation during the school's academic period, which our academic period, what it is, is it is a time period that we have that's not really a study hall as much as it is a time for intervention. You know, it really is an RTI period. It's a time, you know, we really feel like we can help students out. And it's provided between, um, second and third period. It's about 40 minutes long. Um, the idea is to increase scores, of course, on prose fiction, literary narrative, social sciences, humanities, and natural science. With me being a social studies teacher, you know, the majority of the time I, you know, focus on the social science part of it, but I also branch out, of course, to the other ones and try to provide, you know, student tip on those, especially during academic time. Purpose of the study is to help students to have a better feel for the test. Number one problem that they have a lot of times is being able to identify, you know, things, you know, about the test prior to it. Then when they get in there, they get freaked out, they get scared, they wind up, you know, losing their nerve, losing their mind, and they think overall, you know, this is something I can't do. It becomes too encompassing, it gets past the content, and really starts to become something more about the test format. Um, we're going to try and increase abilities within the four identified areas, but it's more about, you know, again, the structure of the test, you know, how can we help these students identify structural areas that they can wind up taking and going forward. The uh, TCA preparation software was identified again as an item to help increase student readiness for the test. So again, this is something you know we really put a lot of research, a lot of time into trying to figure out you know what it is we want for these students. Um, again, an entry, uh, increased structural awareness for the test. You know, trying to be able to find a way that these kids understand when they get to the test. It's more about finding out things within the content rather than trying to figure the test out. And it allows students to be able to develop strategies they can carry over to the test, and not just to the test, but past the test. You know, finding a way to be able to take them to where they have the ability to, to go on to assessments in the future and understand, you know, the structural integrity of them. So the literature review that I performed on this really focused on a few different areas. The first is just research-based test preparation. Is it, you know, is test preparation good? Should we really do it? Should we just look at the content or should it just be a scenario to where we are basically acknowledging the system in a way that we're just saying know the content and figure the test out on the back end. So two or three of the ones that I looked at of course on this was Park and Beck. And they said strategies associated with testing can allow students to have greater success on assessments. Um, they really felt like you know from the reading and things of the sort that you know having that type of preparation, having that understanding, that ability to, to understand the strategy associated with it will really help. Uh, Bill Castro and Boone focus on the fact that uh, test preparation has an effect on student motivation for an upcoming exam and of course if a kid feels better about you know, the test, they're going to wind up performing better in the long run. Uh, 
Uh, Dell and Fox found students must have some knowledge of garden setup to determine the proper course for training. If students don't understand what they're doing and the techniques and strategies behind this and understanding the comprehension, they're not going to be able to be fully functional within the test. Uh, manufacturing a system where all students have an understanding of the strategies associated with assessment, we have to cultivate universal growth again. It's not just about a situation to where we're trying to force these students, you know, to just know for this test. It's about taking something and progressively helping them for the long run. All right, the next is equal opportunities for success. Um, a lot of times you'll see a lot of students that wind up scoring well on ACT, either they're just very intelligent or you know, their parents have helped them out a lot in being able to have a preparation for this. Now, there's all types of different camps and different types of softwares and things that you can use, books, and go to Barnes & Noble, find them. But being able to find a way to make an egalitarian system where all students have the ability to succeed with something we really want to work for. So the availability of programs can be discretionary when parents of different socioeconomic statuses are beholden to purchase them upon recommendation. So teachers can tell parents all they want to, and the ones that will take advantage of it a lot of times you know, are going to be under a different socioeconomic status maybe than others. Um, next, we really focus on the aspect of allowing underprivileged students to have the same opportunities at school which other students were provided at home. You know, how can we provide a system to where these students are, you know, having the same capabilities as other students do at their house, how can we provide it during the day? And again, this was about equal opportunities for success. Alright. This is the references for it again. These are four that we use. It's been, you know, 2011 is the, you know, the earliest, 2012, 2015, 2015. All right, research question number one. How's the implementation of test preparatory, test preparatory software program trial college admissions TCA impact student achievement on ACT assessment 11th grade English? All right, when we're looking at this, this is our justification for a research model. All right, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to let my wife come in and she's just going to try and, you know, I'm going to ask her, you know, what is it that you truly feel like, you know, was the hardest part for you on the reading test? Um, I would kind of identify with what you were talking about earlier with, like, the time constraints, thinking about the structure of the test as opposed to, like, what I'm really doing on the test. I think just worrying about, oh, am I going to have enough time? Am I going to read this? And do I need to go back and reread it to really have a good understanding to be able to answer these questions? And just having that worry of being able to do it all in the amount of time that you're given. And I think, you know, again, we've discussed this and we've discussed it all take. You know, one of our biggest questions, of course, is, you know, how do we allow these students to be able to have, you know, a better feel for the, you know, for the understanding going into it. Because again, you know, the hardest part about reading is just finishing the test, you know, getting to a point to where you can actually finish and have some success and not be rushing, you know, on the last five or six questions because we're talking about a major difference in point value. Mm -hmm. Um, justification with research method, again, student growth needs to be incited by useful resources, the most useful resources, you know, it don't need to be a situation where we become complacent, you know, we get to a point where we're just like, this is the best system, we're not going to look any further, we're not going to do anything else, so finding the best resource to be able to help them, you know, is something we were truly involved in. Um, all the students selected for the research have not been, met benchmark, and that's kind of, you know, our goal is trying to get the kids to benchmark. And again, when we're talking about the reading test, you know, we wanted them to be able to be in that range where they're getting close to 20. Um, the need for some type of test preparation was needed. You know, we really didn't have anything in school. It was just, you know, go over practice questions, talk about practice questions, but we didn't really have a test preparation model per se. And uh, finding software alternatives can allow students to work at their own pace and own skill level. Now within this system, and we'll discuss a little bit later, we'll be talking reflections and things of the sort. Um, the students being able to work at their own pace and things, you know, this, this system was something at first, you know, we acknowledge as being something that they could work at their own skill level and their own pace. But we'll discuss that here in just a little bit. Sampling and participants. The participants for this was 27 11th grade students. We had 13 males and 14 females, 24 Caucasians and 3 African Americans. All students have been identified as RTI students at some point in the last year. The majority of these kids, uh, you know, they do. we did have some kids that had special ed needs, but a lot of these kids too just are students that are just disinterested with school. And that was one of the biggest things that we want to try and do is find a way to be able to provide them with something to where they had a little bit of structure and they felt a little bit more positive about the test. 
but all these students, you know, were carefully selected, and we really tried to be able to find, you know, a way to be able to give the students that this could affect the most, that they could help the most. But again, they'd all been in RTI at some point, you know, within the last year. All right, methodology for research questions. Students will participate in a baseline practice ACT test at the beginning of the year, which we give every single year to establish a reference point for student achievement. Um, we do this basically in hopes of being able to try to provide growth and give teachers an availability for it. What we have here at the Rue County High School is called War Room, and we got it done at the other end of the building, and we basically keep all students' testing records on this. And so uh, we constantly go down there, constantly review, constantly look at different type of, you know, scores and things of the sort and try to find a way to be able to provide a model for them to, you know, establish, here's your baseline, and we're going to try to provide at least some growth. Um, students will use the Triumph College and Mrs. Test preparatory system in the hopes of increasing achievement on the test. Our idea, again, is to be able to help them with achievement on the test. We looked a little bit, you know, when we talked about motivation, things of the sort, but this is really looking at ways to, you know, to really help them, you know, provide some scores at the end, some score results. Results are reviewed weekly to determine student ability increases. Um, consistent discussion between the students and intervention teachers will help develop an understanding of student achievement levels. So again, we discuss these with them, you know, it's, it's not as much in the numbers, but we're consistently talking to them, here's your scores, this is what we think you need to improve, this is how we think you need to come up from this basic ability level. Methodology for the research question. Trying College Admissions was established to be able to help students prepare for ACT, SAT, PSAT, and plan tests. Now, originally, you know, we had only really focused on it being the ACT, but last year we kind of used it a little bit with plan, but it was more for, you know, ACT, you know, because of course the plan tests are, you know, we're really phasing it out here, but we're still giving it within our school. Uh, baseline scores are established for each student within the system. Again, uh, results are reviewed weekly by specified intervention teachers, so it will be us and also, you know, our curriculum specialists, literacy specialists to review for further educational strategy. Transitioning through sections will be dependent on student results on assessments. So again, you know, how they have to be able to get through these and be able to be fully functional within it before they can move on to the next specific stage. Child College admission again was established for these four tests and the main one we're going to focus on within it is the reading portion. Now the reading portion again is trying to be able to look really at student comprehension and other things that provide a reading text. And for them this can be a variety of things, of course we talked about the four main sections earlier, but it can be a variety of things and mixtures in between these sections. You'll see a lot of ACT questions that have, even though they're supposed to be, you know, based on social sciences, they'll have something else, you know, add, an additive into it. Students have the ability to analyze the question regarding the readings and then select their appropriate answer from the multiple choice sections. So in finding this and looking over it, you know, their main thing is trying to be able to analyze these questions to break them down to really look at them. And again, the four areas of focus will pertain to prose fiction, social science, humanities, and also natural science. Student results on practice ACT will be used to establish a baseline for overall study. Only the scores from the reading portion being viewed for this specific study. So we had thought, you know, with other sections and other classes, people had really looked at trying to establish and trying to find a way for these students to be able to be helped out, not just, you know, within the reading um, parameters. So again, student results that were collected weekly by intervention teacher to determine achievement and to identify areas of need for future education. Student ACT reading results will be used to determine the effectiveness of this. So we're, again, we're going to use the actual ACT test to be able to determine how these students are able to function. We are going to be giving our own tests, our own assessments, but the final test is basically going to be determined by what they score on the ACT. All right, baseline student meeting benchmark. As you can see right here, this is meeting and not meeting. We just got a big orange not meeting. Okay, so the first graph that we're going to have here is basically you know, showing that these students need help to get close to the benchmark. Students take a practice test each year to determine the baseline scores, and these scores are kept electronically to help develop a greater understanding of growth throughout the year. All students' primary goal is to reach benchmark, with sub goals to be able to increase their scores by at least three points, to be able to have you know, growth as a main thing. Okay, but we want to be able to reach benchmark. Students are placed in academic periods based on their specific goals, and this group of students needed additional reading. So they're the ones that are identified, and that's the reason we're going with this one. None of them, again, met benchmarking the initial baseline scores. Uh, 
Um, all students' primary goal, again, is to increase scores on the ACT test with sub goals to increase about three points to try to meet benchmark. The educator's primary goal, of course, for us, and for me specifically, is to have 100% growth. The secondary goal is 75% of students with three-point gain, and then 65% of students at the end of the year meet the benchmark. These numbers are probably a little bit high for this group, but you know, it's something where we're trying to shoot for the best possible goal, for the best possible you know, scores that we can find. All right, baseline students at eighth grade reading level. At this point in time, we had 70% of all students in this 11th grade course that were not meeting or not at eighth grade reading level. And only 30% of them were, of course, none of them were on grade level. None of them were on, really not that close. The majority of these kids, again, were at eighth grade level. Many students were in need of specific reading skills. They have a lot of things, you know, problems, blends, phonics, other things of the sorts that you see, you know, with a lot of kids that are on lower level, you know, they start to develop that, you know, to a small extent for some of the really lower ones, but then as they progressed up, again, a lot of them was just comprehension and analyzation. They were able to actually, you know, do the reading, progress it, but again, understanding. Again, we just had just a few kids that, you know, it was just, they just really could not read. They really had trouble the first year. An initial text was given to the students to review and understand their current analysis. Only six of the students were able to score in the proficient range on a writing prompt that we give them following this initial reading. So again, after this, we, you know, we pretty much recognized that these students, you know, some of them had significant reading issues, but the majority of them, again, it was just analysis and also, you know, them pushing themselves, the internal motivation to be able to succeed. Students were asked to take the baseline test to find their specific areas of need for the TCA. And again, we input these into the system. So the students did have a system that, you know, where it was starting out. Uh, following the administration of the test, they take part in the initial tutorial that's given to them to be able to provide them with some structure to be like, hey, this is how it works. Um, this is usually, you know, it was pretty difficult for us this year to try and get them to the point that they understood the process. Student questions about setup and organization strategies were answered by teachers and reviewed constantly, especially for the first few weeks. It was just a situation where they didn't understand the system, didn't understand how it was going to work, didn't understand how it was going to develop. Students were asked to take their time and work through the lessons. As you can see here, uh, each student was asked to finish a minimum of one lesson per week. So in week one, you know, we only had 14 students finishing. Week 2, 17. Week 3, 17. And week 4, we had 19. So, we, you know, in these next two weeks, we were pretty consistent. For the first week, you know, we had pretty much half the class not being able to finish their lesson. All right, as we start to progress again, three students came up eventually to the point, you know, about week 4, we had 19 students finishing. Uh, this said we saw limited growth after we got to that fourth week where we got around 19. You know, we really didn't see much for the next, you know, quad groups, you know, of weeks. You have 21 there for week five, you know, 20 for week six, and 20 for week seven. Then we finally get up to 22 for week eight. Um, some students have actually began to advance at multiple lessons at this point in time, and some of them, you know, that are in that 20 range are actually getting, you know, to the point that they were doing two a week. Uh, student growth through the system has really been predicated on effort, you know, as much as knowledge. A lot of the kids didn't really want to deal with it, didn't like the software, didn't like the content they were going over. You know, a lot of them aren't big fans of English or reading. So for them, you know, this was something where they felt like they were having to have English class twice a day. And that was difficult on them. All right, overall gain of students finishing a uh, minimum amount of lesson went from 52% to 96% at the end. So as we see in this last, you know, set of groups, again, you know, week nine really starts to be the week where a lot of these kids were at least willing to finish one lesson. So again, in week nine we had 25 finish on the two not. The next two weeks we had every kid finish. And then the last week we had one kid that did not finish, and that was just simply because of sickness. So uh, he was out, and he had been one again that had consistently finished the majority of time. So it had probably been one, you know, where we had for the last three weeks at least full, you know, full complete in one lesson. Got any questions? Everything good? All right. Uh, data analysis of TCA prep software continued again less than achieved per week. Also demonstrated student growth pertaining to academic success. The students that completed more that really, you know, were willing to put forward the efforts, you know, they started, you know, the academic success was able to follow. Students slowed down and advancing towards the end of the term to be able to ensure they were, you know, fully comprehending the lessons. They got to a point, especially towards about week seven or eight, where they were just trying to get through as fast as they could. You know, they were just making sure to at least get that one minimum thing down. So they provided a situation where it was a little rough. Students are also asked to log in and complete at least two hours of logged in time a week. 
Now this was something they were at least able to do. Now what we started to understand was they were just logging in and not finishing. So that was one of our big problems that we had. So we had issues with monitoring logging time. So we started to watch that, you know, and look at it for the next few weeks. And uh, after I'd really, you know, told them this is something, you know, we can't play around with or anything like that. If you're going to be in there, you're going to be working. The majority of their time, you know, stopped being at home and they started just recognizing, you know, they were doing it at school, you know. And so the times that were pretty consistent, especially after week probably two or three where these kids were really actually, you know, starting to get in and actually log the time. Usage for the second week was fairly consistent. Second group of the week, again, the five students that were asked about their usage rate. Here you see, you know, we had four to five that pretty much was not getting their two hours a week. They complained about consistent, you know, consistency within the network, being logged out of the program, other computer-based issues, basically blaming it on technology. But again, it was just, you know, the internal motivation. Them not doing it, you know. Um, they looked at it. One or two did have, you know, a bug there. I think in like week five or six. But you know, after that, it really wasn't any type of issue. You know, tech said that pretty much everything was good to go. One student missed the last week for sickness again, which affected the results. But overall, gain for students logging in went from the initial score of 67 percent to 96 percent. And in week 11, again, we actually had 100 percent on that week as well. So you see 25 to 2 on week 9, week 10 was 24, 3, 27, and then of course, you know, 26, but again, that kid probably would have finished off. So we'd have every kid at least logging in two hours a week. Week 9 was an important time for students as they started to be able to feel the urgency from the test. I was pushing them, their English teacher was pushing them, everybody started to really, you know, get after them and become something in that last three weeks where these kids really start to, you know, start to function a little bit better. Uh, student functionality within the system began around week five. They actually started to be able to understand it around week five. It's crazy it took five weeks to be able to do it, but it took that long for them to be able to, you know, at least acknowledge that they understood, the, you know, how the software was working. Most students believe they saw a significant rise in understanding around week six. You know, I discuss it, and during our discussions, this is something that we saw, you know, I'm sorry, week seven, and uh, they really acknowledged at this point in time, they started to understand better and that the system and the software was really helping them. By week 10, most students wanted to elevate their abilities within the software and was asking how to improve. It kind of became a game to them. You know, they really wanted to be able to get as many lessons done as they could, log on enough, you know, it became competitive within them, which was really nice because all of them were trying, you know, to actually succeed. And students' response to use was really minimized by no grade for the class. The only thing that stinks about academic time is they don't get a grade. And so they were just having to do this other goodness with their heart and me pretty much begging them to do it. So again, they start to recognize, you know, about week 10, this could be something that actually, you know, really could help me. Week 7, you know, like I said, their understanding of it. But week 10, you know, it starts to become something they understand they're more fully functional within. All right. Uh, data analysis. When asked what the students like the most about the software, the most repeated response was the setup and the organization. You know, they after they understood it, you know, it became something that was much more, you know, much more likable. It's like for anybody else. You know, if you understand how to do something, you're going to do a lot better on it. Mm -hmm. Students just like having to have a minimum required number of hours. That's the number one thing they complained about. They hated the fact that they had to have a minimum of two hours a week. So that became something that was a little bit, you know, a problem. Identified areas for improvement within the system was more questions, possibilities, review cards similar to Quizlet, more specific areas for growth, finding ways to be able to help them. You know, they just felt like the, the critical areas were kind of generic. In a discussion with four other teachers about it, their answer centered around more review capabilities as well. So it wasn't just something that students talked about, it was something that teachers talked about the system as well. All right, data analysis, the practice test. So we gave them a practice test, and again, we wound up giving them at this point in time. They were tested throughout the action research to evaluate growth. They were given practice tests every three weeks. So again, within these 12 weeks, they could be given four tests to determine their ability level pertaining to the ACT reading portion. Their initial numbers did not show much change, you know, from what we looked at earlier. With only 11 of them at this point in time, you know, students making an improvement, you know, the one-point improvement from the previous practice test. Second test provided a significant change in student development as they start to be able to at least improve one point from that initial test. Because again, we're looking for at least a three point growth. Overall gain from students having one point improvement was from 40% to begin with to the last you know, test we wound up taking again, and they wound up having 81%. Again, 22 out of the 27 kids actually wound up having a one point improvement on that last test. 
with the five, you know, again, it was the same five group of students we've discussed before, but, you know, by the test four, they had actually, you know, their attitude towards it had improved a lot. Students were also given a comprehensive test during week six. This test was a little bit, you know, more difficult. It was something where we had picked out some good reading sections that, you know, had been put out before and we really looked at them, and it was to determine current level of educational standing where they were at. Uh, we taught them about this, it's something we're really pumped up, so they really did try on it, so it wasn't a situation like some of the other tests where they wasn't as motivated. There was some encouragement behind it, you know, we really pushed it. Review and discussion was administered for students not gaining three points, so the kids that didn't gain three points, we asked them why, we discussed what the reasons were, the majority of them again was just not being able to understand at the time, things of the sort like that. But the good part is on this one, at least every student went up one point. So again, there was at least some growth on this, and that's from the initial, initial baseline test. At the midpoint, there were identified areas of concern. Additional reviews were completed with students focusing on a specific area of concern. Students were also asked to review past TCA lessons pertaining to their specific area of growth. All right. Students were also given a comprehensive test following week 12, and these numbers, of course, match up with the other numbers. Again, they want to be in the exact same. Uh, seven more students made the advancement on the specific compared to the week six test. All five students not making gains were also a part of students not making gains on the week six test. Every student went up at least one point though from the original score, but again, they didn't go up three. So this really showed a lot of encouragement because again, these five at least did go up, but they didn't go up to three points. Uh, this was the last assessment prior to the ACT exam. Final tips and discussion took place concerning specific areas where students still needed to show attention. Students were also again asked to review past TCA lessons pertaining to their specified areas of growth. Then we took the ACT. Got it in. All students increased their scores by at least two points. You can see over in this area, I'll give you just a minute to be able to look over the scores. Uh, the students were mostly pleased with their overall scores. Uh, students reached their primary goal of having growth from original baseline tests. So again, every student did grow, which was nice. So for them, you know, that was something, you know, that goal, their primary goal was to have some growth and they were able to achieve it. All right, there we go. 20 out of 27 students reached their sub goal of at least three points, and you can see the growth over here on the side is where it's at. Uh, their three point increase from the practice test, so again, that was pretty good. The hope is to have all students reach their sub goal, but 74 cents of promise in advancement. We were off our goal again by one point, so we missed about one point. We won 75, we got 74. Reasons and analysis grouping, you know, some of the groups that they were in, you know, probably didn't help. You know, some of them said close to friends, things of the sort, that could have been something. Early primary focus on critical areas was, again, very general, very broad from our standpoint and from, you know, the softwares. And identifying students in need early in the process was something we, you know, we wanted to do. You do see some kids over here gain as much as five or six points, so, you know, for some of them it really did help, you know, progress theirs. You know, we actually had one kid with six and, you know, a couple wound up having that five range, so that was really nice. 16 out of 27 actually wound up reaching benchmark, which was awesome. This was the great part of the whole test. Again, not having anybody at benchmark. There were some, of course, over here that had 18s and 19s that were close. But we really had some kids come from, you know, down to wind up meeting benchmarks. So that was really nice. You see all the kids that met it over here, the no's and the yes. Uh, the hopes, again, was to have all of them reach the sub goal again at 65. You know, that was our identity. So, um, I mean, the identified area, but only 59% reached it. But that was great. It really was a promising advancement. Point increase was too much for some uh, students, you know, it was just asking kid girl from 13 to 20, you know, it was a little difficult. It's a little difficult. So for some of them it was just too far, you know, too much. I mean, we had one kid over there again started out with a 12 and wound up getting a 17. So they advanced five points, but again, you know, still shy of the benchmark. Multiple students made the main goal, other sub goal, but did not meet this one, okay? Students were able to meet a teacher and a student goal of 100% growth, 74% of students increased again, 59% of the students met benchmark, did not meet sub goals, but happy with student performance on assessment. Student and teacher both, you know, everybody was pretty happy, you know, with the results. Next steps forward to share results with PLC, discuss results options, you know, talk to them about what we can wind up doing, you know, what are some things we saw about the software, again, it was good. Analyze the number further to find gaps within the software. And also, you know, the results talking about that happened. Did the software, you know, did, it, did the software really help or was it something, you know, that we're doing in other classes? Uh, discuss differentiation with software to be able to improve effectiveness. Find ways to add lessons and add other things to the software to make it to where it's more of an effective system. 
Even though goals were not met, the software really helped the students, finding ways to help the students work with the parameters of the software while also increasing other aspects of paramount to success. You know, we really need to, to find ways that we can, every single way we can, to be able to help these kids. And after taking the ACT test, all the students say that TCA prep had helped in getting them ready for the assessment. They acknowledged it, every single one of them. So again, you know, that was successful in its nature. It was successful, at least from their point and from ours, you know, from a school. All right, this is our part two, which is PLC research question two. All right, um, what we're going to be looking at now is just basically talking about PLCs and you know some things associated with it. Uh, this is another one where we're going to ask you to come in on it. Uh, what was something you feel like is positives of your PLCs at your school? Um, I feel like the positives from our PLC meetings would be us walking away with strategies. You know, things we can do in the classroom, we work together as a team and with our administration and try to figure out, you know, what can we do to help, you know, help our student growth and increase our student growth. And it's nice to feel like you have those ideas being given to you so that way you can work on it. Oh, good. Mm -hmm. Good. And that's something, you know, here, and we'll talk about those here in just a little bit. You know, we, we I feel like that's something, you know, we do, you know, fairly well as well. What about the... Uh, some things y'all need to work on, what are some things you all may feel like you need to. I know it probably ain't got much because I know you get along with the PLC group so well, yeah. but what are a couple things? We do. <laughs> Sometimes we probably get along and, you know, get off topic and waste some of our time, but for the most part, you know, we, we get things done. But I think sometimes you might have these good ideas and these good strategies, but you don't, it's not very specific. And maybe we can get a little more in depth with it and say, okay, specifically, this is what we're going to do. This is what it will look like in each of your classrooms, and you know, and carry it out. Maybe. Good, good. It's good y'all have identified areas of something we need to work on just a little bit more. All right. Uh, PLC research question: Why did the analysis of the trust survey, or what did the analysis of the trust survey explain about social studies department here at the Rupert County High School? All right. Uh, five social studies teachers this was given to, that were representatives from all grade levels, the amount of years taught was 27, 24, 19, 15, and then another one was three. And so this was given to them. Um, trust survey was completed to indicate the trust each member felt was exhibited within the PLC. The main reason of completing it was to determine the validity of trust amongst department members and the survey was predicated on truthful answers associated with each participant's ideas regarding each individual answer. And this is something that I really stress with them, you know. Nobody else is going to find out but me, you know, and they all trust me not to, you know, say anything about it. So again, every single one of them stated that they gave truthful answers on this. An example of the trust survey is this. It's a little difficult to be able to see, and uh, I'll make sure to, uh, to be able to give you a copy. But again, it's just basically asking questions, you know, about trust within your, you know, within your specific PLC. Surveys were handed and delivered to each teacher with an explanation for the study. We talked about it for a while. When they were finished, they were instructed to call, and I came and picked them up. Each participant turned in their survey by the end of the next work day, so that was nice. All right. Results for the survey were compiled and placed in various categories for agreement and importance levels. Most survey results were 100%, but there were some results in the 80% and also 60% range. All right. Important level was also was more uh, cohesive in their answers. These are some of the questions which the participants stated, again, that they had 100% on, colleagues willing to share materials, uh, feeling welcome in the colleagues' classroom, believing the colleagues had good intentions with their interactions, uh, believing the colleagues had good intentions with their interaction with students, and I know that I can count on my colleagues, was also another one. Uh, I believe my colleagues are honest, I believe that I can learn from my colleagues, I believe everyone on my team makes meaningful contributions. Our team celebrates personal and also professional successes, our team celebrates our collective accomplishments, we do that way too much. And I look forward to the time that I spent with my colleagues. These are the ones where I got 80% result back, you know, that they agreed with this. And I believe that my colleagues are competent and capable teachers. This is something that people, you know, we at least had a member that was a little bit leery that every single one of our colleagues, you know, are completely upper level teachers. And I believe that everyone on my team is pulling in the same direction. And again, this was a different, you know, different person that answered this, but they didn't truly feel like everybody was pulling in the same direction. I feel comfortable with my colleagues in the room during my instructional periods. This was only 60%, and I'm afraid, and I'm not afraid to share student results with my colleagues, which again was 60%. Uh, these were also some of the teachers that talked about the you know thing that we had talked about before, and again they just this is something right here that you know they don't like to do all the time. You know people don't like to be competitive and don't like to let somebody else know that somebody else beat them or their kids did better. 
Uh, for the important portion of the survey, every participant agreed that all statements were very important. So again, this is not, you know, and looking at the validity of the survey, every single person said every single question was very important. So it wasn't a situation where any of them, you know, were skewed. So it was 100% on that across the board. So all the members did. Uh, areas of strength for our PLC is trust within the PLC's parents, cohesion to each other's consistently displayed. We constantly celebrate everything every single week. We're constantly celebrating something that we've done, probably too much. But we have a winning attitude, and that's constantly apparent within the group. Areas of weakness for the PLC, no one wants to be observed ever, ever within the group. Nobody ever wants to be observed, not by anybody, not by each other, even though we're friends, not by the principals. Teachers don't like sharing results, again, we talked about, and we do not have a consistent vision. You know, those are things that you acknowledge from the trust, uh, trust survey that was there. And not just from that, but also, you know, discussing things amongst ourselves. Ways to improve these weaknesses, one is to observe more for shorter periods. Don't make it a bad thing. Make it where something, you know, that's not as, you know, just daunting of a task. Mm -hmm. Discuss how to improve results in a constructive manner. And then discuss reasons for vision while trying to compromise on ideology. Again, trying to compromise and trying to find ways to be able that we all get our, you know, points of view in. Um, these are our next steps for our research question number two. The next step is... Start modeling lessons during PLC where we make it a little bit easier for us to be observed by each other. If we just model just like three or four minutes of something, you know, just allowing people to be like, hey, this ain't too bad, this is not too awful. Mm -hmm. uh, review specific strategies on a more consistent basis. Um, have more real discussions regarding reasons for lesson implementation and ideas regarding strategies. Don't just be like, here's a lesson, this worked good for me. You know, talk to them, this is why, this is what broke it down. And this right here is the number one thing that I always think is huge for PLCs that should wind up mattering that we don't do enough and all PLC groups don't do enough. Is try to take the personal cooperation that you have amongst yourself and make it a classroom cooperation. You know, take yourself from just being friends to being, you know, friends that are coworkers as well. You know, that's number one thing that's always difficult. D discussing things like getting past the point of just being friends just in a friend way. Make it where, you know, you're actually friends as colleagues. Reflection of PLC research question is, it's great for us to think about this stuff. It's good, everybody should, everybody should look over it, everybody should discuss the reasons for it, you know, why do we do this, you know, what was our, our thought pattern behind it to help us realize that we should use each other more often. And also the biggest thing is they created a closer cohesion. You know, when we discussed this after the fact, they wanted to talk about it. They wanted to know the results and stuff and, you know, wanted to know how it was and things and they really did discuss different ways you know, we could start working together better as a group, you know, just to provide that little bit of cohesion. So this PLC research, you know, question really was effective and, you know, helped out a lot when we wound up looking at PLC at the end of the school year. And that is the end of TCA prep to increase ATT reading scores. Got any questions? Yeah. Everything good to go? Mm -hmm. I hope you enjoyed it. It's been fun for us. It's been fun getting it together. It's actually been enjoyable, you know, looking at these things, you know, the majority of the time you do something like this, it's just, you think it's not going to be that effective and you think it's not going to be something that you can really use, but this really has been good. So both research questions, you know, um, I really appreciated the results and things that came out of them. They were very effective, so thank you. And thank you, Kim. <laughs>